Hello everyone, welcome back to the Plane Maker tutorial series. In this video I'm going to talk about the two different types of air-to-air -air combat and what design considerations are associated with each of those. So let's just get started. Now, combat between two fighter aircraft can be divided into two categories. There is BVR and WVR. BVR combat is combat between aircraft that are beyond visual range, so that's usually more than 10 miles away from each other. And within visual range, double VR is obviously uh, going to be the opposite of that when two fighters are fighting within 10 miles or within visual range of each other. So each of these different types has some things associated with it that will make your fighter perform better or worse depending on uh, its capabilities. So we're just going to very quickly talk about those and what you need to consider. So BVR combat is usually done with long-range missiles or medium to long-range missiles like the AIM-120 or the AIM-54. These missiles uh, can fly anywhere from a few miles all the way out to like 60 and the performance of the missile is dependent on a couple things. Firstly it is dependent on altitude. So the higher your fighter is when your missile is launched the thinner the air is which means the missile will encounter less drag and it will be able to accelerate more quickly and go faster. And this is good because missiles only burn rocket motors for so long. After a certain point, they are just kind of uh, flying ballistically using the energy they've built up uh, over their burn time. So having a fighter that can get to high altitude is very, very important. So just to give an example of this, if a missile is fired at sea level at a target's co-altitude, also at sea level, uh, that missile will only really be effective within 10 miles. If a missile is fired at a target from 40,000 feet in the target's co-altitude, then the missile could potentially go as far as 60 miles to hit that target, depending on how aware the target is of the situation they're in and if they maneuver. So altitude is very important. Next important thing to missile performance in BVR combat is speed. And this should be fairly intuitive. If your aircraft is going Mach 2 and the missile comes off the rail, goes to your target, that missile's already going Mach 2 when it's fired, which means it will go even faster as, it rocket, as, it, as its rocket motor burns and it picks up speed. So uh, a missile fired at Mach 2 will have significantly more range than a missile fired subsonic. So just keep that in mind. Having speed is very, very important to having decent missile performance. So speed and altitude are very important for uh, performing well uh, when you are attacking other fighters. But what about when you're defending? So the thing about air-to-air -air combat that Hollywood movies generally tend to uh, kind of gloss over is that um, it basically all takes place beyond visual range these days. And that means that there are uh, it's not quite as simple as you just fly at the other fighter and then you merge and then you're dogfighting, so there's there's more to it. It is possible to defeat other missiles that have been fired at you, and the way you can do this is by exploiting the fact that once a missile's rocket motor burns out, it's relying on the energy it already has to maneuver to hit you. And so let's say that we are in this F-18 here, this Su-30, has fired a missile at us. So that missile has come off a wing station and it's going this way. And because this aircraft is carrying Fox 1s, they have to have a radar lock on our aircraft the entire time the missile is flying towards us. Which means our aircraft will receive a warning from its radar warning receiver. As soon as we hear that warning, we will know that a missile has been launched and there are several things we can do. 
So let's say the missile is flying towards us, and right about here, let's say about 10 seconds after launch, its rocket motor cuts out, so now it's just kind of gliding. If we are aware of this, what we can do is we can turn away from the target. We can do what's called uh, a drag maneuver. And what we're just going to do is fly as fast as we can this way. And the missile will keep on coming towards us, but eventually it will just get too slow. Because if we're doing this properly, another thing we're going to be doing is decreasing our altitude down to just above the ground so that we are in denser air, which means the missile that's trying to get us will encounter more drag. And the design consideration here is uh, acceleration. So the faster your aircraft can accelerate away from oncoming missiles, the better chance you will have of surviving them at closer ranges. Okay. Uh, the, I think that's the only defensive maneuver I'm going to talk about. So just acceleration, altitude, and speed. That is, those are the three very basic components to a good BVR aircraft. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not going into a ton of depth here. There's a lot more that goes on in BVR than I have time to talk about. So just bear that in mind. If you want, you can do some of your own research. It'll, it's pretty interesting stuff. So uh, that option is available to you if you want it. So that's BVR done. Um, next is within visual range combat. So before I start, I just want to explain briefly how these types of fights usually go. So let's say these aircraft have run out of missiles and they've decided that they still want to try to shoot each other down, but they only have short range missiles and or guns. So what they're going to do is they are going to go to the merge, and the merge is when the flight paths of two aircraft that are flying towards each other uh, cross. So flying along, flying along, when we pass, we are merged. And once we are merged, there are two things that can happen. We can either enter what's called a one-circle fight or what's called a two-circle fight. And a one-circle fight is where we turn one way and our enemy aircraft, our bandit, turns the same way, turns into us. And in this scenario, the fighter that has the superior instantaneous turn right, so that means the fighter that can yank on the stick the hardest and swing the nose around at the expense of airspeed or altitude or something, will win that fight. Because the goal in this fight is to have your nose positioned in such a way that you can either get a fire solution with your guns or with your short-range missiles. So basically, whoever can get their nose around quickest uh, using instantaneous turn rate will be the winner. Uh, the next type of outcome we can have from the merge is the two-circle fight. And the two-circle fight is when one aircraft turns one way, one aircraft turns the other way. And now, in this scenario, you can't just yank on the stick as hard as you can, because if you do, your aircraft will be out here with very little airspeed, low energy, and if this, if the bandit is doing what they should be, they'll just be trying to maintain their energy state around the turn circle. And so, in this case, the aircraft that will win, or I should say the pilot that will win, is the one that can have their aircraft perform at a higher sustained turn rate. So sustained turn rate is the deciding factor in who wins a two-circle fight. And now I'm just going to briefly talk about what sustained turn rate is and what it means. So instantaneous turn rate is where you are sacrificing airspeed for nose position. So you are pulling a massive amount of angle of attack, you're whipping the aircraft's nose around, but the induced drag that that maneuver creates is also going to bleed off a ton of airspeed. So in an aircraft like the F-18, you could be flying along at 400 knots, you could yank on the stick, and by the time you're 180 degrees around the turn, you could be going less than 100. It is definitely possible. 
And while that does get your nose around very, very quickly, that means that you are out of airspeed and you may be out of energy depending on your altitude. So in a case like this, uh, where you want to still turn quickly, but you need to maintain your energy state. You want to do a max rate turn, or sorry, max sustained rate turn. And most aircraft have a speed at which they will be able to sustain a turn rate the fastest. And at that speed, what that, what's happening is the pilot has selected full afterburner, and now they are using their stick to uh, bleed off the acceleration, basically. So they're pulling just enough Gs that they don't accelerate in that turn, but that they are still turning. And the speed at which your aircraft can do that the fastest is the maximum rate speed. And so like we said, the aircraft that has the fastest, or I should say the pilot that can sustain their aircraft's maximum turn rate uh, better in a situation where both aircraft are the same in this fight will win. Uh, the aircraft in a situation where the aircraft are not the same in a dissimilar engagement, the aircraft that can uh, perform at the highest sustained rate of turn will win that fight. So sustained instantaneous turn rates are both very important to uh, being a successful aircraft in a within visual range engagement. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about in terms of within visual range engagements is the concept of energy. So the total energy of your aircraft, I think it's a uppercase E, I'm not sure, is your airspeed, so I'll just call that S, plus your altitude, and I guess to some degree plus your fuel state. And what a good pilot will do in a dogfight and within visual range engagement is keep an eye on their energy and manage it well. So an example of this would be, let's say you have, uh, you've just performed a split S maneuver to get away from a missile or something and you're about to merge. And let's say you are down at the ground, you are going Mach 1. You're very, very fast, but you have no altitude. In this case, you have uh, high kinetic energy and low potential energy. What you can do to turn things around, figuratively and literally, is trade in your kinetic energy for potential energy. You can pull your fighter into the vertical, such that it's being carried upwards by its kinetic energy and its momentum in gaining altitude. And uh, fuel isn't a super big part of this, but it is it is a component of the total energy aircraft. For now, I'm just going to ignore it, but just be aware that's a thing. Um, so energy is very, very important. The concept of energy is something that is studied for weeks, months, years uh, among fighter pilots, and knowing how to manage it well is very important to being a success successful pilot. Now the design consideration here is energy addition. So that's how well your aircraft can increase its total energy state. And usually uh, that means more powerful engines because more powerful engines allow you to climb faster and to increase your potential energy and they allow you to increase your speed faster to increase your kinetic energy. So the more powerful your aircraft's engines are, the better energy addition capabilities it will have. So keep that in mind when you're designing an aircraft to do well in within visual range combat. So I think that's all I'm going to talk about for this video. Um, this is a pretty complicated subject and I've barely scratched the surface. I'm just trying to tell you enough so that you know what to prioritize in your design. Um, so I hope this helped. If it didn't, you have questions, send me an email or leave a comment. Come to office hours if you have that information. Um, and yeah, that's it. So I will see you in the next video.